So in an attempt to get down to the bottom of Soweto's culture of non-payment and find out what residents feel about now being called on to cough up, we're hosting a town hall debate at the Proche Glen Library. My colleague Sakina Kamwendo will be there. But first, let's cross to our reporter Mariketla Mushabe, who is in Clip Town where the Freedom Charter was signed in 1995. Mariketla, so what do residents of this historic area say about not only having to pay for electricity, but especially those prepaid meters? Good evening to you, Tepi. So, well, what I can tell you is that it's a known fact uh, that some of Soweto residents are unimpressed with ESCOM. And I'm going to step out of this shot here. Uh, this is a transformer right on the shoulder of Chris Han informal settlement. This is illegal connection. You can see some wires here that are being connected on this transformer here and we understand that this was done just a couple of hours ago and of course this after ESCOM came here on Monday to disconnect these wires and mm -hmm. as you can see they are actually stretching towards this informal settlement on my right hand shoulder uh, where we understand that residents continue to collect, I mean, to connect illegally. And of course, from what we understand at this stage is that they are not going to back down despite ESCOM coming on the ground to disconnect. And what they are saying is this is about affordability crisis and they cannot watch or rub, rub their hands and watch while ESCOM continues to disconnect without any alternative means of giving them electricity. What they saying also is that they feel that ESCOM is really not showing any interest uh, to meeting them halfway in as far as uh, electricity provision is concerned. But these are some of the concerns that we had coming to this area uh, just a couple of minutes ago. S sooner we will bring these residents in front of the camera to tell us why is this happening. We'll probably get to know or to understand from those that are connecting themselves, of course, or connecting um, the community here, and those are the so-called Easy Yorker or electricity thieves. They will be speaking to us, trying to understand why is this phenomenon been there for years now. Mm. Marie Gittler, just looking at the wires that you were showing us, and obviously it, it just appears such a dangerous situation. We hear about it all the time, people who are burnt to death, who die or are gravely injured because of these illegal connections. Are residents not concerned about that? Well, I understand the greater need for being connected to power. Are they not concerned for their safety? Of course, I mean, we've been covering this story over and over again, and of course, the common concern that we hear from both the residents as well as Izinyogas is that of danger to the lives of residents around or in uh, Soweto at large. So we understand as well that people have actually lost their lives. About three weeks ago, we saw four people losing their lives in just a week because of mm -hmm. illegal connections. And of course, Izzy Nyogas on the other side saying that they do acknowledge uh, this problem, but they've been protesting. They have been approaching officials to really come with solutions so that they may not live in the dark. But they are saying that they are not, they're left with no option uh, but to continue connecting illegally. And of course, as I said, Sebiso, we really expect them to actually give us more detail about this scourge in the area later on. All right. Thank you very much, Mariketla. Mariketla, my colleague who is uh, in uh, Clip Town. And now let's uh, cross to my other colleague, Chriselda Lewis, who is in my Mabedla, where residents have been without electricity since ESCOM disconnections in March. So, there she is. Crisalda, I see you are already um, surrounded by residents. You would have had an opportunity to chat to them. What are they saying?
Well, indeed, Sepe, so we're live from Mamapetla in Soweto this evening. Just one of the areas that has been affected by the disconnections in this particular area. You have about 125 households that have been disconnected, according to these residents, for the past five months now. They say they've been without power for that long. They say negotiations they've tried to have with the ESCOM regarding their electricity bills, which they say are ex- exorbitant, have fallen on a deaf ears, they say that uh, they've tried to speak to the local councillors as well about what can be done to resolve the situation here. But uh, that has also fallen on deaf ears. Indeed, uh, both young and old have gathered uh, just uh, here behind me, as you, can, as you can see. And many of them uh, say they will, they'll have their say about exactly what their challenges are. In majority, they're complaining about exorbitant bills uh, that are coming uh, from uh, uh, the city. And they're saying that uh, they don't understand understand why some of their bills run into hundreds of thousands of rand. Mm. Negotiations have been going on about a possible flat rate that uh, residents in Soweto can pay. Others are saying they're also considering at this point asking that prepaid meters also be put uh, in their homes so that they're able to then gauge how much electricity it is that they use. So when we came out here at Tepe, so this afternoon, many of the residents say they're hoping that the powers that be this time will listen to their concerns. The residents here say, despite some of the reports about Soweto residents not wanting to pay for the power that they're receiving, they're saying they're willing to go into negotiations about a possible flat rate, about possible uh, having uh, some of these prepaid meters installed in their homes so that they're able to gauge exactly how much power that they are using. But a very frustrating situation for them here. I can certainly tell you here where I'm standing in my petla, uh, Tepi, so is that it's only the street lights that are operating here and you don't necessarily have a beg your pardon we'll let them cool go past uh, in front of us here and uh, many of them are saying that um, they're hoping that some kind of resolution could be found uh, to mm. this Tepi, so apologies for that you see many community members are also coming out of their homes this evening mm. uh, to come and have their say we'll certainly speak to them a little bit later on as the program goes on but uh, a very frustrating situation that has an impact they say on many facets of their lives, Mm. how they go about their daily business, how their children are expected to go to school, how they're expected to go to work. Uh, They say they're open to negotiations. It's not that the user pay principle should not apply. They're saying they're willing to have negotiations about understanding better what it is they're using in terms of electricity and, uh, you know, what uh, they're being billed by the city itself. You can see here next to me as well, Abom Kulu also taking, uh, Abom Kulu also taking a seat here. Uh, They certainly do not want to be left out of this broadcast. They say this is about the only opportunity that they will have in order to speak uh, to the powers that be about what exactly their concerns are Mm. here at Tepiso. And you know, Crisolda, as you were talking about um, the socio-economic impact of it, I'm looking at uh, the picture behind you. It is mostly of women, which tells a story about who is being disproportionately impacted by this lack of power and how it impacts on their lives and the loved ones. Well, certainly, Tepi, so the sentiment that has been shared uh, here from this afternoon uh, as the sun sets uh, here in Soweto is that every time uh, that, uh, you know, they have to stay without electricity for so long, the impact that it has on them, mostly old people that you can see that are gathered uh, here behind me, the elderly, who say they have to make uh, means in this particular era, lighting candles uh, in the evening. It's not that they don't want to pay, but they're saying that uh, there needs to be an understanding uh, on their part about what exactly it is they are using. You know, uh, often you'd hear sentiment uh, that is shared uh, whenever there is a dispute uh, pertaining to the electricity bills that are sent out uh, by the city. Uh, Tepi, so you'd often hear people say, I don't understand what my statement is saying. There's no way I could have used so much electricity. Are you able to give me a breakdown exactly of what I have been using? So the billing crisis on its own does create a problem as well. So in terms of the 
socioeconomic circumstances, the impact. I mean, small businesses in this particular area are barely able to survive because of uh, the lack of electricity. But uh, on the other hand, uh, one could perhaps argue, why should there be preferential, preferential treatment that is given to the residents yeah. of Soweto? But we'll certainly hear from them at a much later stage, uh, Tsepiso, okay. about uh, what their concerns are. And uh, I'm sure where Sakina is, she will also get uh, uh, some of the individuals who have been invited there to touch on some of those aspects because the residents here believe that it is unfair. The negotiations that they've had have fallen on deaf ears. They said they've tried to meet ESCOM halfway to try and find out how they would be able All to right. salvage uh, this situation. But they say they cannot continue uh, under these uh, circumstances. Tepiso. Thank you very much, uh, Crisaldo. Crisaldo Lewis, my colleague who is in my bed. So it's a big issue that we're looking at uh, here on the full view this evening. Soweto, a population of almost 1.3 million people were told about 77% of those who are connected to those prepaid meters. Only 12%, about 12% are actually paying for power. It's an affordability issue. We saw earlier this week ESCOM threatening to cut electricity to three municipalities in the free state until they settled their bill. The Mangaung Metro owes 149 million rand. We cross now to our reporter, Tabiso Khatdebo, who is in Bloemfontein, to find out the latest. So, Tabiso, we've heard from Gauteng. What is the sentiment where you are in the free state? Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Tapiso. We're coming to you live from Bloemfontein. Uh, Tapiso, you know why we're here. Uh, on Monday, ESCOM made an announcement to say that uh, uh, three municipalities uh, are in uh, the wrong. They are in debt, so uh, their electricity are going to be switched off. We're talking uh, Mansupa municipality, uh, which incorporates uh, Lady Brent and also uh, Manyatseng. And also we're talking about Mafube. Uh, this municipality is under currently under administration and also uh, our metro here, Mangaung Metro. So the announcement was made on uh, Monday to say that on the 4th of uh, uh, December, it's going to be next week, they are going to be having their uh, electricity switch off because of their uh, debts. So we just arrived from the meeting this afternoon uh, between uh, uh, Copta and uh, uh, those affected municipalities and also uh, ESCOM just to see ways in uh, order to resolve this matter to sort of uh, uh, avoid the issues of uh, uh, people not having uh, 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 electricity, especially during time uh, this time of uh, the year. Uh, but when we arrived there, it, it was obvious you could see that uh, there was tension, uh, especially among the officials of the municipalities, uh, especially with all those uh, 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 debts. We've heard that uh, Mangaung Metro uh, owes ESCOM about 170 million rent and all, and Manyatseng in Lady Brent, the Mansupa municipality. Uh, owes ESCOM 205 million uh, 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 rent uh, piece of. and also when we talk about Mafube municipality, the municipality that has, I have just explained to you to say that uh, they are under administration they are owing 52 million uh, rent. When we talk about administration piece of, we talk about three municipalities currently under uh, administration here in the province uh, we know of Maluti Apofung uh, we know of uh, uh, Masilonyana uh, in Tianazen and also uh, Mafube in Frankfurt. All in uh, 2016 they were placed under administration and to, to be honest with you these municipalities, free state municipalities are, 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 are still struggling, uh, they are still uh, trying to collect some revenue in order to sustain themselves, so it's it's difficult situation, uh, what I can tell you uh, at Sepiso with all these municipalities here in the province of the free state So Tabiso, are the issues the same in the free state Bloemfontein particularly are people willing to pay but say they don't have money or are people just refusing to pay for electricity? Uh, in the free state, uh, Tepiso, uh, we've got people who are saying that we are using uh, 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 we are using prepaid electricity. How can they switch off our electricity? We've got those people who are saying that uh, we are unemployed. We we want to pay electricity, but uh, uh, we we are unemployed. And also, we have got those people who were registered as indigent by uh, the municipalities, various municipalities. Remember, when you talk about municipalities here, we're talking about uh, five district municipalities, and also. 
about 19 uh, local municipality and also uh, and, and a metro which is uh, uh, Mangaung. Some people are saying that we, 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 we want to pay electricity but because of that we are unemployed, we cannot pay and some of them are indigent uh, uh, they, obviously they cannot pay and uh, when we spoke with people on a Tuesday after the announcement that uh, the electricity is going to be switched off, they were saying that how can they switch off? The municipality uh, needs to fix their problems our municipalities need to fix their problems because we are using uh, prepaid electricity, how can they uh, switch off our, our uh, uh, electricity and what uh, I can tell you it's a piece also is that uh, uh, municipalities here, as I explained earlier on, they are struggling to collect uh, revenue. They have okay. failed, they have tried, they have failed. You remember that uh, a former minister of Cocta was here in uh, Bloemfontein last year at Mangaung Metro to say to solve the problems here. All right. To Can solve so problems around here. But unfortunately, uh, things are getting worse instead of being fine. All right. Thank you very much, uh, my colleague, Tabiso Khatebe. He is in uh, Bloemfontein. So we're live from Soweto in Gauteng to look at that issue of electricity. Also asking the question, is this a basic human right? And uh, please do uh, share your thoughts with us on our question of the day. Are you paid for electricity? If you are, what do you think about those that don't pay? And what do you understand of the reason? Why. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go away.